Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's time-lapse video is going to be for a 40 by 56 that we built this spring, and we started it right after a major rainfall, and our building site was pretty much built up with some gravel, so there was some water filled in with this site. As soon as we dug our holes, it went into those holes, and all that water had to be pumped out, and some of it you know, just kept coming in, so we pushed it out with concrete, but it's no big deal. The concrete pushes that water out. We got our brackets all set and we're ready to start building. First thing we're going to do is go around with our Stabila 350 rotary laser. Check all of our grade so we can transfer that grade mark to our columns perfectly with a story pole and make up all of our columns. Now when I say make up, we're not actually making them. We're just cutting them to size to fit. They come from Ohio Timberland. And then we're able to start installing all of our wall girts. As you can see by doing it on the ground, it's the most efficient. You don't have to climb around and you can be very accurate. Make sure details are all done correctly. And then we're gonna bring in our machinery and lift it. You've probably seen us do it before. If not, there's a lot of other videos here on this channel that you can check out. Make sure you, you do if you're interested and hit that subscribe button uh, as well if you think it's something you'd like to watch more of. But as you can see, first day in, we've got all of our framing done for our main walls. So first thing on our second day, we're ready to start standing them. The Kubota makes it quite easy. It's got great capacity and with that Teleboom from Cheyenne Machining or Cheyenne Tooling, I'm not sure. Uh, we love that thing. So we can do about 56 foot of wall at once, hence why we were able to do that back wall at one pick. It's 56 foot long. And really what we're limited by is the strength of the framing. We don't want to bend it too much. And once all of our main walls are up, we go to the corners and we get all of our corners connected, always making sure that our our side walls or our eave walls, they go the full dimension of the building and then our ends get cut back an inch and a half and that's what creates the perfect dimension around our building. Here we're just continually standing up some more walls. Now once all of our walls are up and secured, we go ahead and start with an end truss. And for this job, you can see we got that doorway that's still unframed. That's so we can get in and out of the building. But once we get this first set of trusses up, uh, and usually a set for us is, is whatever length our purlin is. So at 18 foot purlins, we can get two bays of trusses up before we have to build this overhead door. So we're gonna get that header all built. It's a double two by 12 inside and outside. Then we have to kind of work our trusses on the inside through that doorway. It gets a little bit cumbersome, but thankfully once again with that Kubota and the Cheyenne Teleboom, we can do this quite easily and we've figured out a way to maneuver it uh, so we can hang trusses from the inside as long as we can get them inside the doorway. But we're gonna make quick work of these trusses here still on the first day of framing. We've got all these walls, all these trusses up and we're gonna finish out the day by completing um, this entire main frame structure, which is a great day for a 40 by 56. Now the next day we got to work and there was a little bit of snowfall because remember this is early spring so we got one of them crappy spring snowfalls but we used it to get all of our overhangs on, get our grade board on so that I could get this great footage with the drone flying through the frame. I love a good frame and I'll just go ahead and stop talking and let you guys just look at all those lines, angles, and symmetry. Notice how the snow has been melting and turning it into muck. But next day we get prepared to go ahead and wrap up framing. We wanted to put roof on. Normally we would start putting our roof steel on because that's gonna really lock in the diaphragm of the building, the strength. Um, but because it was a little bit too windy today, we opted to go ahead and start getting all of our, you know, kind of incidental framing, our window frames, walk door frames. Right now here we're doing the porch framing. We're getting headers installed so we can install a porch on this building, which is gonna look great. Start of a new day, and once again, you can see that wind in the trees. We just couldn't do the roof, so we opted to do some soffit fascia and some base trim before we decided the wind was just too much, and we walked away. But the next day was gorgeous, so we got going on our roof steel, and we made quick work of it. We knew that if the wind picked up, we wouldn't be able to do this, and you just always got to be safe and smart, so we try to do it on the optimal days. You can see all those chains holding the building exactly where we want it until we can get this roof steel on. And once that's done, we know the building isn't going anywhere. 
So this is just part of living in the Midwest in the springtime. One day it's nice, the next day you wake up to four inches of snow on a freshly installed roof, which means it's gonna be a complete mess. It's beautiful right now, but as you'll see as we start installing our side wall house wrap and we get our wains coat on and we start doing our windows, it's nice to work on initially, but it's just gonna turn to muck and mud. And that's just the start of it. And I'm not a pessimistic guy, but you'll see that the snow will start to melt off the roof, creating a nice little drip that is going to be continuous the entire day. But regardless, we're going to make the most of it and we're going to start getting all these details done. And this is when the building will really start to come together quite quickly. Now that we've got that base trim on that we did the other day, we can install our wainscot, just lickety split. We've got windows going in. We've got window trims getting cut up right now. And that's going to all get on so that we can start installing our side steel. One thing about post frame is with the use of house wrap, um, there's really no sheathing to be installed to. Therefore, if it's windy once again, it really affects how this is installed. Luckily, it's a pretty calm day for us. Now, this is a new day and you can see what the snow left us since it has melted a lot of mud. And I'm not a complainer. Thankfully, we've got these mats that you can see the scissor lift running over. And without them, we were not able to get down this wall. And I'm sorry, we don't use ladders because honestly, they're not efficient. And so I would rather move mats around a couple times a day and use my machinery than have to haul ladders around and deal with the muck and mud. But uh, we're able to get this wall done, which is awesome, and then move back onto the front, which has some gravel. You can see we're getting the steel up and around this garage door. We've got that one piece jam flashing trim that we have custom bent by metal sales for us and it really provides a nice clean detail on our doors. And then it's to the back wall, which is really messy and you can't see it here in the video, but it was bad. The mats were getting stuck in the mud and we almost had to use machinery just to get them out. So we were smart and went down one time and one time only. One thing to note is that all of this side steel is getting installed in one day. So we're really busting our tails, especially dealing with all the mud and muck and moving the mats but obviously the machinery makes a big difference. And our goal here is to get it entirely closed up so that insulators can show up. I think they're showing up the next day to get all our walls insulated. So we're gonna wrap up this outside and we're gonna get our porch piers dug. We're laying it out right now, getting them dug. And then we're gonna pour them so that we can be prepped for our porch build. I got Zach on the inside of the building right now. He's getting prepped for insulation. He's doing all of our attic air deflectors, making sure that our vents are ventilated properly. And then we get our ridge cap on and our concrete truck shows up. Once again, we got water pouring into the holes. Now that the concrete's done, we're gonna go ahead and install our walk doors. These are Plyco 92 series doors. And I like those because they are fully thermally broken, which means the slab and jam have zero metal to metal connections inside and out. There's a gasket, which is gonna help prevent any um, cold transfer, heat transfer from inside to out. And then we're gonna go ahead and start working on our interior. We've got that R19 fiberglass bat on the walls, and then we're gonna use a four mil vapor barrier and then frame our uh, horizontal wall girts. And we do that because that allows us to keep that bay completely full of insulation versus having a bunch of thermal bridges with studs every 16 inches on center. And that is why a post frame is so efficient. Once that's done, we're able to start getting our ceiling started. Now, people always comment about why do you spend so much time insulating your walls when all you do is put steel on your ceilings. That's because I don't insulate my ceilings. I have a subcontractor who does it. When we are done with our steel ceiling, I'll have them come in and they will put all that insulation in the ceiling. So don't worry, there will be an R38 fiberglass blown into the ceiling and we make quick work of this steel on our ceiling as well because with the right equipment, which is that mega deck um, and a little bit of know-how, the ceiling goes pretty quickly and we move right into installing our wall steel. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that we skip right over the windows. Why? Because I wasn't really planning on getting this far today. Therefore, I didn't have all the window trims available for us to use. While it does stink that I don't have them available, it is what it is, and we'll come back and do that later. But I was outside getting all of our 6x6 cedar posts prepped, and then the guys came out, gave me a hand, getting them all stood up, plumbed up, and uh, installed. We're using some GRK 3 8 12-inch lags to connect everything. So I know people always ask me that question and we're just doing, you know, basically a through connection going from top down. Um, it's honestly, I think, plenty strong. I know there's a lot of different ways to do it. And then I'm going to hand cut all of my rafters, 
do our porch purlins, just like we do our mainframe purlin over top. But when I get to that hip, I always dye them in. Now, I will say, if you look really closely, you're going to see hangers on everything. I don't probably show it very well in the video, but we do put hangers on all these connection points just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And we're sheathing with a 5 8 OSB sheathing. I like that because half inch or thinner does not hold screws very well. We're using some titanium or I don't know what they call that kind of underlayment, but non-tar paper. Greg's working on the porch ceiling underneath while me and Zach are working on the roof details. I will say porches, they're a ton of work. There's a lot of detail work. It's not just you know, cut and dry, like doing the building, the mainframe and stuff. That goes pretty quick. But I always say the devil's in the details. I mean, I don't say that. A lot of people say that. And it's so true. If you take the time, you do your best on, you know, parts of the building like the porch, that's what's really going to stand out. That's what people are going to notice. And that is where I think you should spend the most time. You should always spend, you know, the most you can afford to spend on every detail because I think they all matter. But in general, I like to really make sure that that porch is going to shine uh, and be a staple in the project. As you can see, we've got the interior trims now. So I'm coming back in, getting those all done so that the guys can come right behind me and install uh, the steel around them. What I'm using is a composite jam extension board around all the windows and we like that versus like a steel jam extension because I think it holds up better, it looks cleaner and is more durable for sure. It's really nice to see this space come together, uh, all the steel getting installed. It's a nice bright space and it's gonna be a great workspace for our client. Um, and it's gonna be super bright, super clean and obviously maintenance free with the, the metal finishes. So one thing you're going to notice here as I'm installing our roof panels on this porch is that there's some wood showing. And that's because I forgot the trim piece that goes there. Uh, it's a gutter drip or E-flash or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter what you call it. I forgot it. So I'm going to have to come back and install that at a later date. We've got corner trims to install. I like to try to make them look seamless. One piece. I did a video on that. Go check it out. It's in my channel under the tips and tricks. And then we've also got a piece of outside corner gable trim here that I'm installing. And I'm going to cut that specifically so that our gutter will cap into there and look nice and clean. I know I've had people ask me why they stick out past our roof, and that is the reason for that. I just don't install gutter, so you don't usually see that happen. Now this is usually one of my favorite parts of the job. And I think it's important, not just because we're vain and we need to see our names on a building, it's because we're proud of what we did and we want to make sure that we put our signature on it so that other people know that we're proud of what we did and we're willing and wanting to put our names on it. And I think that's important. Now this footage is not us, this is my door installer, Rainer Door Authority. Uh, Rainer Garage Doors, I've been using them for a long time. Great doors, great service. I've had really good luck with them, and they've always taken care of me. So if you are looking for doors, I don't make any money on it, go check them out, Rainer Door. And uh, we're using a TM200, so it's a foamed-in-place door. It's got a high R value, good structural integrity, and overall good-performing door, and we've had really good luck with them and their service. So Rainer Door, that's what's going on here. Once again, I don't do it. I pay that out to a subcontractor. Now, I know I'm going to probably have this asked a couple times, so I'll try to answer it. What is with that big gap at the bottom of the building? Well, while I install this hip cap here, uh, I'll kind of explain it. So this job site was not necessarily ready for us, but we were ready for it. So we went ahead and started building, even though it wasn't all brought up to grade perfectly. And that just means that after the job is done, all of that will get filled in and then there will be concrete poured on the inside. So no fear, it will be all taken care of. And that's pretty commonplace with post frame. You can't build on a you know perfect grade because then it would be almost impossible to put your grade board in. So we always have to have it, have it down a few inches, usually four to six inches below finished floor. That way we can do our work and then all the finishes can be done, concrete can be poured, and then it's all sealed up perfectly. But I got Greg here lining up my hip cap, making sure it's just perfect and straight. I don't want any kicks in it. I want it to be perfect from tip of uh, hip all the way up to the corner on the building. And I am doing some through screws. It's not a fastener-free system, um, but it works out pretty good, looks good. 
And I figure there's no reason to have fastener free hips when the building is um, has exposed fasteners. And there you go. That is the building. I came back and put those knee braces on the porch. Didn't get filming of it, so sorry. But I'm proud of it. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll catch you on the next one.